and any information I find on it is in German and I don't know German and I can't I haven't found too much on YouTube about it so thought I'd give a try today on a, on a short tutorial I don't do too many tutorials I'm more on a live note and I don't usually talk much when I do this stuff but let's see if we can uh, we can hack it today um, first of all what I suggest I want to give a shout out to Maru I may be pronouncing it wrong good possibility but if you go to Maru Dot net. I'll try to put the link down below as well. This is where I'm, I'm getting this stuff from. You can get on uh, some of the other websites and some of the mod sites and, and download this stuff, but I really suggest you guys come directly to this link. You're going to get the, uh, the pure gold. Um, and all you have to do is click on mods. And, and what I do, <coughs> once I figure out what I want, I'll come back here. But what I personally would suggest is if you actually go to Google Web translate click on this iTools all you gotta do is type in .net and you can put German it should automatically figure it out but hit translate no of course not Let's try this again tech language oh, that's why I always do that translate what you can see is his website or their website, I don't even know if it's a guy or not, in English. Um, so the cool thing about it is, <coughs> excuse me, sorry, fighting a cold as well. You can actually read what this stuff is about, but I still see, you almost have to go back and download it. It's from the original because uh, Google Translate doesn't like it when you start clicking on links to actually start downloading. Because that's the only drawback about this dude's website. Um, I'll say right off the bat is it used uploads.net and... Uh, I'm not even going to show it on my uh, stream here because I get some pretty interesting uh, stuff on that page, but I'll just leave it at that. Like I said, I'd still try to download it from here. Like I said, all you've got to do is click on this guy, scroll on down, and hit download. And like I said, if you want to try to follow along this video a little bit, you can actually download this as well. I'm just going to do a breakdown of the fabric script for now just to kind of show you guys how how it works, how it functions, and if you want to tweak anything. Um, I'm going to actually pull this guy into my map and go from there. Like I said, that's that's where I'm starting at is maru.com, or .net, sorry. Um, and here's my map. Let's go ahead. First thing you want to do if you're going to import anything, and I guess I'm not going to get in too much to importing if you guys want to learn how to import stuff. There's plenty of videos out there on that. Um, let's see, I do my stuff in maps, import. Um, in fact, what I'm going to do is go new folder, seed for storage, simple, move this guy right in there, okay, now I'm going to go to my map, you just got to make sure you import stuff correctly, everybody knows how that works. <laughs> <coughs> Alright, I just want to find a good spot here to put this. I guess I should have been ready. Zoom on over here for now. Um, I'll take this guy and move him a little bit. Alright, so what we're going to do is break down this thing first of all before we get any further. So, if you open this right up in the editor, this is basic uh, basic fab script here. The very top transform group is uh, is going to have all your all your indexes. Um, this is where you got to look. The area is four. So how it works is it goes zero, one, two, three, four, and and how this works is there's a start, width, and a height. So you start, this is basically, this is clearing the area and this is more or less for a placeable. <clears throat> you don't really need this in Giants Editor, I don't believe, but if you're going to put it right in your map, but if you're going to do a placeable, you do need this. So if you if you watch, you got your starts here, your width is here. So basically that's going to be the width of your mod. Your height is going to be your length, or actually you could look at it either way, length, width, but 
Like I said, you get your start, width, and height. So what that's going to do is kind of like fields. If you do field dimensions, it's going to make this area. It's going to clear the area for that mod. Like I said, if you look at your index, it's says 4. So it's 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. And then here's all your indexes. Uh, player index, this is an interaction trigger. 2, so you go 0, 1, 2. And this is where, let's speed this up a little bit. This is where you look at your display, have all your information. Um, it doesn't look like on this one. Let's go into my map so I can show you a little better. Um, let's see. Locations, factories. Let's go to my fuel plant here. All right. So, how the player interaction works on this guy is you actually have that little blue screen that pops up and shows you all your information on the screen um, just to give you a better idea let's see fuel plant and yeah, player trigger so if you're standing in here it's going to give you all the information on the screen plus it's going to show you on your info and your in-game as well up on top if you hit F1 um, we can get into more of that um, I'm going to probably do a video where I actually add this stuff in later I just want to do a little quick breakdown for now. So, we go back again. Here's your product per hour. Um, they've got this cranked up because they're just using this as a storage. I said, if you're just going to do a basic building, you can have this at 1500 per hour or so on. It goes off of liters. Uh, work an animation uh, index, once again, 0, 1, 2, 3. This is where all the good stuff is. This is where you're going to have your particle animations, you're going to have shaders and, and all that. And as you notice, once we once we grab this transform, there are more indexes. So you get in here. So this is where your particle animations would be. For example, the uh, oh, let's go to the saw factory. So let's here's the actual sawmill. Zoom in on him. Oh. Try that. That's a little better. So for example, if anyone's familiar with the saw particle animations, right here there's a little trickle of uh, wood chips coming out of here. So if you go to work animation, particle wood chips, it's just a, basically a placement of the node. Um, you have to load the particle system file name in here. Mine is in the maps import sawmill2 particle and then wood chips <coughs> i3d you have to make sure these files are located in your map so it can actually load if it's not there it's just going to be a node there not doing anything and you're probably going to get some errors um, so once again the same thing it's it's work animation is oh just lost my mic sorry about that zero one um, particle index zero Shader index, 0, 1, 2, 3. And this is where you get back into your displays I was talking about earlier. Um, so this guy's actually right inside the building. And we'll get into displays as well because that gets a little confusing. And I can show you in another video how to set them up. So, yeah, 0, 3, and then your sound, which is right here. Once again, you've got to have uh, sound sources. So make sure it's loading from your file over here. If it's not there, it's going to cause some issues. And <laughs> I never noticed that before. There's space, so this uh, map probably wouldn't like it too much on server. Interesting. I just saw that. Just noticed it. Okay, so that one's done. Go back up. So we are at input index. Once again, zero. That's where all your inputs start. And here's your on create, mod on create, fabric script. And we'll show you, you have to make sure that you have that in your map mod script. And you have your output index. Once again, you just go zero, one. Here's your output. All right, so that breaks down basically the callbacks. Um, and I want to show you something quick as well, because if you're going to make your own your own mod, this is the easiest way to find what all them callbacks are. Um, if you right click on this, 
I suggest if you don't have it, if you've gotten this far, you probably do. Notepad++. <coughs> if you open that i3d up, here's where you're going to find all that information. Um, you go on down, in fact, you can actually hit Control F on Create. It's the quickest way to find it. And here's all your uh, string types, basically. And that's going to tell you, if we uh, bring this over here, I have dual monitors, so this is going to make it interesting. Let's actually minimize that and bring up the uh, silo storage. So basically, when you go to your top transform and it's given all this information, so for example, area is a string. Um, let's do that. Player index is a string. Product per hour is going to be an integer. I've also seen this in float. I have to do a little bit of searching on that, but I know that uh, in the game itself they like to use integers. And integers have to be a whole number. I think I saw that on uh, DodgeNet stream before. And work animation string, input index string, and here's the one that's a little different. Uh, on create is actually a script callback. And once again, output index is a string. Um, <coughs> excuse me. I don't see it on this one. Let's go look at one of my other ones because I know. It's a boolean. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. <laughs> um, hmm. Yeah, there's not going to be any in the um, fabrics, I think. Antigen, integer, float, string, string callback. Basically, a boolean is a, a true false. That's where you have the little, the little check mark. Um, And Siri's talking to me all of a sudden. And actually, we can go into palette. Getting off subject here, but let's give you an idea. If you go into your palette, open him up. Right there, delete if empty. You, know, you can choose a true or false there. So that's what that's all about. Alright, back to this guy. Now, let's go break down. Oh. Fabric script. Let's let's get into that quick. That when you download import seed fruit storage, he actually has them because this is a placeable. It's in the script. What I usually do is I copy these files. In fact, I'm going to copy them. Now I'm going to leave this go now because I got to test this. I haven't even test the new one yet. You want to copy these files into wherever your other scripts are. Um, so here's my scripts right now. I'm using additional map types, which is adding fruits. Additional triggers is one of them. And there's some other stuff. And then fabric scripts. You want to copy them two files where you're going to run your scripts from. Then you have to go to your mod script and make sure you have these extra source files in there as well so make sure you're pulling that fabric script and additional triggers make sure you guys do that or it's not going to load the fabric script that's where that comes in <coughs> alright so basically then you're going to start breaking down you have input triggers you can have multiple triggers um, different types like on this map or on uh, this building here um, you actually have a log trigger. Um, if you click on it, I have mine set up. Let's see. Yeah, I have this single in input set up, so it actually has a wood trigger and a tip trigger. Um, it takes logs over here, and I set it up so it also takes wood chips here. Um, this can also be named product one, product two. It's uh that the name side on this is not real specific, not an issue. It can start becoming an issue when you get in the li liquid trigger. I found, but uh, like I said you have product one, product two on your input side. Um, product one is the fuel source. They they were just doing straw originally. Um, I added uh, <coughs> wood chips and straw, and basically if you want to add anything to that product, it's just here's your fill types. Make sure you spell it right wood chips and straw <clears throat> and to break down the product see there's nothing down here for input but on your product you've got a capacity which is going to be I'd have to look on the 
it's in the GE editor again, but I'm, I'm going to believe that's either an integer or a float. Your factor is probably going to be a float because that's not a whole number. And that's basically how much of that product you want to use to make one unit on the output. Uh, if you don't put anything in there, it's going to be one for one. Like I said, we already talked about here's your field type. That's going to be a string. And this is just a name. This is what it's going to call back out. It's going to put it in your little info, info screen up here when you're in game. <clears throat> there's your tip trigger. Um, there's a lot of stuff in this. If you click in it, um, we can work on this a little bit as well. I have not messed with a start and end trigger. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm believing it's just basically part of that trigger. It shows the beginning and end of it. Um, this is the actual physical trip trigger. And I will show in a new video how you can actually make this. It's actually a lot easier than what I realized in the past. I always just copy paste it. But. And there's your plane. This gets back to your the minimum maximum. So if we go back to the tip trigger. Once again there's a boolean, boolean right there. I didn't even remember it was that's an actual is an area trigger so your move max and your move minimum what this means if we grab this plane right now as you can see we're at a negative 2.485 and right there negative 2.485 so what that means is when it's at zero it's going to be at that location right there um, when it's at its max, it's going to be at a negative point zero six seven. So basically, if I just grab this plane, <coughs> excuse me, and if I move it up, as you can see, this number's changing on the y side. That's what your minimum and maximum about. Like I said, minimum would be down here. So you could pick whatever number you want. You could start this guy way down where you can't see it. You can start him halfway up. That's where that minimum comes in. Um, and like I said, your your max would be as high as you want to go. And if you get up here, obviously it's going to look funny. Um, you also need to make sure you have it set at least. I'll go back in here actually. Hit Control C. I always start it at that minimum. You could actually drop it lower than that. But I've actually had it set wrong and it was actually starting up in the game. And, and when it starts, it would drop down and go back up. So I suggest at least matching that number or having... The actual plane at a lower level than what your minimum is. That's just uh, what that's talking about. Here's your actually mo your actual moving index once again, zero, one, two, three. So that's what you're moving. That's what this minimum and maximum is going to be moving is that plane. Not move back. Um, honestly, can't even tell you what that is. I've never messed with it. So uh, most of the stuff I keep the same. Don't mess with it. Once again, your trigger index. With zero, one, two, that's your tip trigger. Uh, your trigger width, 1.5. I'm gonna assume 1.1 and three. So it's uh, as you can see, the Z is changing. So that must be a center. It's three to three. So I'm assuming you can actually change it with your trigger. Some of the stuff is actually I've never even messed with, to be honest. Just thought I'd kind of come through here and kind of show you this stuff. Um, here's your bail trigger. Um, you got to watch some of this stuff because if you drive into it in game, it's collidable. Um, so your static tip trigger static static. I believe you can drive through when you start getting your plane. See how it's kinematic? I'm probably pronouncing that wrong as well. And here's where you can actually get in and see the actual mask on it. And we'll get into that on a more in-depth video. But like I said, it's pretty cool on this one. There's actually a bail, a shovel target, and a, and a pallet trigger. Uh, I think I have it underground because I don't have any pallets for for uh, wood chips and straw anyway. I hope this audio is coming through. This will suck if this doesn't work. <laughs> Alright, now the other fun stuff. You start getting into your displays. Um, this one's set up a little different than FS15 was. Um, your first display is what I talked about. It's down here um, on the actual interaction display. And I'll show you how I cheat to get these in, in the location need to be as well um, in game because that gets very tricky because you can't see it in the editor. Your second display is basically just your 
large digital display so you can actually see let me get away here so I can select off of there so it's actually going to show you how much product is laying on the ground here um, alright so we got display and this is actually all the numbers <coughs> so that breaks down the input side and you get into your output triggers um, this one's got a couple of different ones this one's using a pallet trigger and it's using a silo trigger. Um, <laughs> this auger right here actually came from Manchester. I believe Reaper is the one that did the Manchester map from 2015. But once again, your output trigger, there, there's no indexes here. You start getting into your product. Here's where you start getting some indexes again. They're not really indexes, but some callbacks. Here's your capacity. Here's your, fa your factor once again. So basically it's going to tell it how much it's making from your product. You know, if it's one for one, it's going to make one for one whatever your input was. Your fill types, of course, are actually uh, wood chips and then that's what you want to call it. Um, let's get into your silo trigger. Once again, you got a bunch of indexes to go off of. It's It looks rough when you first look at it, but if you just break it down from what I talked about before, it's not that big a deal. Uh, your automatic trigger index that's where if you pull in it gives you the option to automatically start loading or set it to a manual load um, so basically we'll open this up zero one two three four five pretty simple five your effects node zero one two three four this is just basically a node it's gonna use the in-game particle animation to start loading the material into your vehicle um, it, kind of sucks you can't see it in, in GE but it uh, I found that uh, if you pull a trigger from another source and keep this right on the ground it seems like it's very close to always being where it needs to be on your onload for being for a vehicle but I mean you can see that node is basically just below where it physically looks like it is because it starts filling from up here and you can always you know go in the game try it and come back out and fix it <coughs> excuse me once again here's your fill use per second uh, you know all this stuff is cap sensitive uh, I believe this one's an actual float but it, I saw in the new ones are starting to use some integers so integers that's just basically how fast it's gonna unload into your vehicle here's your fill type you know make sure it matches with your product if you don't have the right stuff in there, it's not going to be pulling out right there. You'll, sometimes you get some silly errors like that because you don't think about changing that because you copy things over. Your fill, fill volume discharge node, so 0, 1, 2, 3. I already talked about that. Sorry about that. Your uh, effects node, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. This is where you start getting in um, your grain, your smoke. Uh, this is basically telling the material type like I said I haven't messed with this I basically just kinda copy this stuff over um, this is what your on load is gonna look like I have not messed with it but I'm gonna assume that if it's really high in the air you're gonna wanna crank this up and this is how wide you want it so if it's a, a wider opening you can open that up as well I have not tried it but that's pretty much uh, pretty basic thinking there and then your node is zero 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 so I'm gonna assume that is zero 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 that's usually an index there I'll have to do some more digging on that one I just kinda leave this stuff <laughs> your particle position this is gonna have to do with your effects as well and then uh, this is where you start getting into your text start fill stop fill is what's going to actually give you on a feedback when you get inside this automatic uh, trigger once again two automatic text automatic fill to a uh, manual text manual fill um, once again we'll go look at the mod descript here's your text stuff so let's see I think it's down here here's, here's where it gets into the start fill stop fill and then there's your uh, you also have to add in the, the help box text info and here's your automatic manual fill start fill stop fill 
That's what that's basically referring to. Oh, so that's it on that guy. Once again, we just have another display. We went over that, and here's just a product two. This one's a pallet spawner. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, the way this guy works, uh, your pallet is going to be basically facing the way the blue arrow is. Um, there's your trigger, placement node. You have to make sure. Oops, I knew something was wrong there. There we go. Make sure you've got a capacity. Make sure that matches your pallet. Um, this one's the boards that come with that building. Um, let's see here. Max import. I think this is under sawmill two. It's under pallet. Here's your actual board pallet. I actually tweaked this a little bit so it would fit on the auto loading trailer. So yeah, basically, see it's a capacity of four thousand. You want to make sure that matches, or you'll start getting some of the pallet not free errors <coughs> on the display, and it's not going to keep producing you're gonna have some issues when you restart the game if there's already a pallet starting and here's your fill type boards and like I said this isn't from uh, default this is wood chips um, so I actually had to add this fill type we'll get to that on another video as well and we're gonna call it board pallet in our info screens and then once again we just have some displays uh, we kinda went over to player trigger think this is just basically the display graphics itself not the graphics but just a black Let's see what happens. yeah this is just like the black um visible stuff it's not the actual shader that we'll get into but that basically shows where it's going to highlight and show you information when you walk to it i haven't checked yet <laughs> I keep wanting to see if fabric supports like UPK where you can actually use that for a vehicle. Kind of like the idea of being able to drive in with a vehicle and see some information on it, but I have not dug into that yet. Visible objects, this is basically just all the eye candy I call it. This is where you want to throw all your, uh, like I put decals on the ground all the time, and the auger. I mean, it doesn't function, it doesn't do anything. It's basically just something there to actually show the particle coming out of. I haven't gotten in depth as enough, enough to actually make the auger turn, and that part would have to be separate anyway to function as animation. So yeah, as you can see, the ground, everything is just part of the the visible objects. Once again, back into the work animation. Um, kind of went over this. There's your particle stuff. Um, wood chips I showed you where you have to actually pull that file make sure that file is visible from it from here it's gonna pop you some errors when you import this building a lot of times if you're importing it from another map this actual folder is not even gonna be there you'll have to make sure you drag oh, let's see import sawmill I said a lot of times if you export from another map, this folder is not going to come over with it. You got to make sure you go grab that folder because it's where it has all your saw emitter, your smoke, and your wood chip emitters. Um, so yeah, make sure you grab all these. That's why you just go down through each single transform group and see if it's asking for information. Because once again, these saw emitters, it's basically just sawdust coming off these saws. But it's, it's got a file it's pulling from, so make sure you look at this file location, you match it up. And it needs to be cap sensitive, especially if you're going to put it on a server. Um, make sure it's spelled right. A lot of times you can actually take and copy stuff. Here's your smoke emitter, it's just basically come out of the smokestack. Alright, then we get into the animation. <clears throat> I have not messed with any type of animation on any other buildings. This one was already there, so pretty much left it go, but... Once again, you're going to have all the information in there. Clip source is already with it. I don't think that was an issue for me. <coughs> we kind of talked about sound already. And get into the shaders. This is where them dis that display gets really interesting. Um, let's actually go over this guy. It's a little easier to see. So work animation, shader. 
Um, it basically has an on-off light. You have to line up. The orange shows in map. The green doesn't for some reason. So you basically have to line up with these two buttons if you want them there. I mean, some of the stuff you can get out of there if you don't want it. Here's your display. Um, this is what's basically going to give your blue screen. Um, if I bring up window and uh, material editing, it's actually going to show where that screen actually comes from. And uh, I'll get with get more in detail on that when I get into the map as well. Um, this is the pallet mover. That's a whole other deal there um, so that doesn't really have to do with the direct fabric that actually it's kinda like the wool mover but it'll actually pull them pallets away from that location so this thing will steep, keep uh, producing anyway um, just a quick rundown like I said I'm sure I went either too fast or didn't make sense on some stuff but I said watch the video over and uh, if you have any questions always feel free to hit me on Twitch. Uh, I've got a messenger called Kick you can shoot to me or you know leave a leave a message on YouTube and I'll try to respond back. I, it's it's tough trying to get my message on YouTube. So the quickest way is I usually keep an eye on my Twitch page. Um, my Twitch, YouTube and everything. Um, my mod links are right on top of my page. So like I said feel free to jump on there and uh, shoot me a question or if I'm doing something wrong tell me what I'm doing wrong if you have any suggestions for me I'm always open for them as well so that'll do it I said it's just a breakdown in the fabric in English <laughs> um, we'll uh, stop the video and continue with importing into the actual map we'll see you in a bit